Thank you so much for joining our latest episode of K-Rex Cafe. I'm now joined by Sergeant Susan Peters, who's with the Colorado National Guard. Thank you so much for stopping by and talking to me it's today. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's talk about what, what you do. What is your title with the National Guard? So I'm a recruiter, a recruiting and retention NCO in the Colorado Army National Guard. Okay. Now talk to me a little bit. Of how, how did you get here? How did you get to become a recruiter with the National Guard? How, where did this all start? So it started from my original service when I joined the Colorado Army National Guard um, when I was much younger. And then um, I became a recruiter because I love the Guard so much and I'm able to talk to people and I want to help to bring people in. I think it's uh, wonderful. It's just a wonderful way to serve. So I got in originally when I was 18 years old. Mm, okay. Yeah. Which is pretty young. Mm -hmm. um, now, for people who may not know, myself included, mm -hmm. um, what what exactly does the role the National Guard play for the defense of our country? Okay. So we have in the National Guard uh, a state and a federal mission. So we are trained, we're equipped, equipped, and we're ready to go in the event of a state emergency or disaster. Okay. Um, so we help out in our local communities and our neighborhoods and within our state. And then we're also trained and ready to go if we need to defend the nation or go on a humanitarian mission or, or something like that. So natural disasters would be something that the National Guard would be called to. Absolutely. Yes. Floods, fires, any other type of natural disaster. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you're part of the Colorado National Guard, and mm -hmm. each state has its own, what would you call it? National Guard. <laughs> uh, its own National Guard, but its, yes. own, its own kind of branch. You can transfer between? Oh, so if you, let's say you join the Colorado National Guard, and then you decide uh, to go to school in New York or something like that, you do an interstate transfer, and, and then you're part of the N New York National Guard. Okay, so. okay. Mm -hmm. Now, talk about benefits. You're talking about school. Mm -hmm. How, how mm -hmm. is it that you can do all these things and be part of the National Guard? I feel like so many people don't know enough. They don't know. They don't know about the flexibility. Right. And it's not just the New York National Guard. You can go to any state, right. any state if you, if you want to transfer. Um, but being in the National Guard means that you can serve your country, you can serve your community, and you can also work full time. You can go to school full time at the same time. Um, you don't have to serve and then go to school. You can live with your family. You can live near your friends. You can stay in your home state. Um, you can decide. You can fulfill all of your civilian dreams while you're also serving your country and your community. Okay. Now, what made you want to join the National Guard at 18? <laughs> so when I was 18, and I could have joined at 17, mm -hmm. um, I, was, I had started college and I was working full time. And I wanted something more. I knew I wanted to continue in college, but I also wanted to serve. And so I originally did not know about the National Guard. As many, many people don't understand that National Guard is part-time service. Mm. Generally, we serve one weekend a month and two weeks in the summer. And so when I discovered that I could continue with my bachelor's degree and serve, uh, it was a no-brainer for me. And also, I wanted to do something different. Not everyone does this. Yeah. Only about 1% of the population is in uniform at any given time, less than that. Wow. Yeah. And even less for women. For women, yeah. Women are about 15%, a little bit less than 15%. And I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something bigger. I wanted to do something that I thought mattered mm -hmm. in my community and for mm -hmm. my country. But I also didn't want to give up going to school and living where I wanted to. I wanted right. it all. I wanted it all. I wanted both. And the Colorado National Guard was your answer. <laughs> yeah, the National Guard. Yeah, the National Guard is the answer if you want it all. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I love that you, you can go to school. You said two weeks in the summer and one weekend a month. Yes, that's approximately. The, that's mm -hmm. about the commitment. And I mm -hmm. mean, uh, one weekend a month away is the, it can be a treat. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think we were talking earlier. You owe it to your family to leave them for <laughs> one weekend. <laughs> give them a break. Give, yourself give them a break. break. Yes, and also it just gives you some variety in your life. Mm. Um, the training is incredible. So besides getting my education for free and being part of something bigger, um, the confidence and the character building it can't be underestimated. Mm. So people go in and they're shy and they're young and they come out with the confidence of knowing they're doing something that 99% of the population won't do or can't do. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about this uniform. So the uniform is obviously important. Yes. And you're paid whenever you're in uniform. Yes. So that's 
something that people don't understand. They think yeah. because we have a voluntary military that it's you have to volunteer to be in the guard without getting paid. But you get paid whenever you're training. So your in initial training you're getting paid, your weekend a month you're getting paid, and your annual training you're getting paid. Anytime you're serving your community or your country or training for it, you're getting paid. And now what about school? How does that play into it? So you can go to school full time, be Absolutely. in the National Guard, and, yes. and talk about state and, and State so tuition. you're getting paid for your training, um, but then we also have state and federal tuition assistance. Wow. And only the National Guard has state and federal tuition assistance because we work for the governor as well as for the president. So we have um, per semester $4,250 okay. for state tuition assistance. The federal tuition assistance is 4500 per year. We also have the GI Bill, which go is direct deposited into a soldier's account every semester that they're in school and so that's just another way to pay for education so you really can graduate with no debt that's incredible mm -hmm. now you're a woman in the National Guard let's talk yes about, I am let's talk <laughs> let's break this down for the okay. people, people watching let's talk numbers how many okay. people are in the National Guard in Colorado so in Colorado we have around 4,000 okay. or 4,000 to 4,100 somewhere around there okay and how many of those are women so about 17% are women. So oh that's somewhere around, is this a math class? It's somewhere <laughs> around 650 or <laughs> 650 to 695 or something like that are women so in the Colorado National Guard. So about 650 women in the Colorado National Guard. That's not just the Western Slope, that's Colorado as a state. Yes. That's, that's not a large group, but that, what, right. how awesome right. is that? I mean, how does it feel for you when you go to events or training mm -hmm. uh, and you're in uniform and it's such a male-dominated, um, I want to say industry, such a male-dominated group. Mm -hmm. how, mm -hmm. how is that for you? Uh, I love it. I've had nothing but positive experiences. You know, the people, once you're in uniform, you're brothers and sisters. You know, we really are one big family. Mm -hmm. And anyone in the military will tell you the camaraderie is very difficult to describe, but it's very intense mm -hmm. to, have one to have one another's back. Um, so I often don't notice how few women are in the military. I mean, when they're there, I certainly, you know, we tend to right. <laughs> it's be like, friends, but, hey. <laughs> but um, I don't notice it so much. Okay. Yeah, and I, I just, I think it's great. And, uh, and as long as everybody's working hard and doing what they need to do and we're training together and um, we're all, you know, living in the same state and in the same communities. And so mm -hmm. it's really like a big family. I think so many people think of the well, people like myself mm -hmm. think of the military as you know this service that you leave your country, you leave your family behind, you're you're giving up, you're sacrificing so much. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I love that you talk so much about the impact that what you're of what you're doing has has on your community. Yes, you can you can have. You can have it all. You can have it all, yeah. I say that and people think, what? You really can. The flexibility is there. Yeah. And I mean, you have a family. Yes, you I have, do. You have a degree. Mm -hmm. You have, t let's talk about that. How were you able to be a part of the National Guard since you were 18 years old? Mm -hmm. You have a bachelor's. You have. I have a master's. And you have a daughter. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. how, how did that how did that work out so the education piece is easy because right. you're serving part-time and you're going to school so that's of course you can have a bachelor's a master's a PhD you can have whatever education you want and wow. you can get it and it's super affordable or free if you're in the guard so that's just that just comes with it that's one of the benefits um, but having a family also because typically soldiers train one weekend a month and like we said before, sometimes you want that weekend to get away or, <laughs> or take a break. Yeah. Um, or if you have a job and you, but you want to do something different. So let's say you're a teacher, but then on the weekend you want to go and shoot big guns and play with big trucks or, or um, serve in other ways or serve people in the medical field. You can do that. Um, so it's, it's not that hard to, to make it all work together. Okay. And then maternity leave is a thing. Maternity leave is a thing. Mm -hmm. yes. So talk about that. So I was not in when I had my daughter. Okay. Um, but absolutely, there's maternity leave. There's so. uniforms. There, yes, there, there are, are uniforms. There are maternity <laughs> uniforms. Yes. This, is, this yeah. is big news to me, yeah. maternity uniforms. So people have a lot of preconceived notions yeah. about the military. Like you can't have a life, and you can't have a family, and you can't have children, but that's just not the case. Yeah. You can have a life, and an education, and a family, and you can have fun, and you can have your 
entire civilian career and you can still serve your country, you can serve your, your community, you're getting the best training, you're getting some adventure, you're gonna get some travel, you can volunteer for more travel if you want it. Wow. It's really a way to serve and, um, and just do everything that you wanna do. Sounds like endless opportunities. Mm -hmm. Now, I wanna talk about some things and this is, <laughs> these, this is for my ladies. Um, I wanna talk about your hair. So you have long hair. Yes. And now it's up in a very nice bun. Mm -hmm. What oh, are the rules you. on that? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so, there, so there are regulations. Okay. There are regulations in the military. Um, and so in general, you can't have your hair touching your collar. And this is actually a question I get from um, women, or, uh, girls and women who want to join the military. Yeah. Do I have to cut my hair? It, no, you don't have to cut your boys hair. Boys might think it's, it sounds silly, but it matters. It I mean, does matter. What are the rules? Yes. Makeup, nail, like all yeah, this stuff. Yeah, there's makeup. There, the, uh, there are rules for all of that stuff. You can't go out with club hair and makeup right. when you're in uniform. Right. Um, you have to keep it neat and tidy, but you can have your hair in a bun or you can have a bob, or as long as it's not touching your collar and it's not a blue mohawk or, uh, <laughs> or something really asymmetrical. Right. Um, yeah. You okay. Can so do you it. can't. It can't touch your collar. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can wear it down. It can, you can be wear in it a down. Bob. It shouldn't be in front of your face or touching your eyebrows. Not but your yes, eyebrows. you can have a. A neat bob, absolutely. Okay. And then mm. makeup natural, not, no club makeup. But <laughs> That's you right. don't have to <laughs> abandon makeup. You do not have to abandon makeup, no. Okay, no. and then nails. Mm. Yes, nails, there are regulations also. They can't be long, they can't be unnatural looking. So, okay. so there's a little bit of uh, room right. you know, to maintain your femininity and your individuality. I love that, they, that, that it's allowed and that it's flexible and that mm -hmm. it's addressed mm -hmm. and that um, women can can still be yeah, women yeah. in uniform. And men also have regulations. Right. So they they need to keep their hair in a military hairstyle and they have facial hair regulations and so yeah. Okay. Yep. Now where can people go for more information? If they have questions about joining the guard, becoming a part of this community, you know, different ways they can serve, how how they should all call me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Colorado National NationalGuard.com. NationalGuard.com. And then uh, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we are, we are everywhere. Um, so if you just look us up online. Yeah, yeah. there we are, there's everything. So um, yeah, all of those ways you can scan the QR code and it will okay. bring you right to the website. And um, yeah. That's a lot of, I bet there's a lot of great information up there. Um, there is and we're always happy to educate people. Uh, people should not be afraid to call or contact us with questions okay. because we are always wanting to spread the word about the Army National Guard because people don't know. They don't know what it is sometimes or, or that they get paid or what we do mm -hmm. and so we want to get the word out and we're always looking for good people to join us. Yeah, and make, mm -hmm. make an informed decision, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, understand what it is that you'd be getting yourself into, mm -hmm. ask questions. What would you say to any young woman who is considering joining the National Guard but is unsure? I would say to every young woman and young man, if you can do it, do it. I, I, I don't think there's anyone who regrets their military service. And this is such a great way to do it because you're serving the people around you, you're serving your community as well as your nation. So I, I love it. I love it and I would tell anyone who can do it to do it. Well, thank you so much for coming by this, the station and talking to me about all of this today. Of course, it was my pleasure. Thanks yes, for having me. Yes, we love having you. For all this information, go ahead and go to westernslopenow.com and check out all the other KREX cafes. We have so many other interviews up there that are similar to this. In-depth, great information for our community. Uh, thank you so much to our sponsor as well, Be Sweet Cafe and Bake Shop. We'll see you here next time.